Hey, good, a very good afternoon to our attendees today and also our panelists who you can see on video. Uh, welcome all. We are gathered today for a session on the art and science of branded content and celebrity endorsement. Uh, Dana, the next slide, please. As you all know, uh, you know, as part of the MRSI's Wednesday webinar season five, uh, we bring to you a host of exciting topics uh, once every month on a Wednesday. Uh, and, and the objective of Wednesday webinars is to focus on the changing face of marketing research and insights and how we can uh, collectively come together to be a driving force for this vibrant industry. Next slide, please, Sienna. Your session host for season five of Wednesday webinars, uh, Sundar Mutraman, that's I. I'm CEO of SL Ventures, a marketing ROI consulting. Samir Grover, who will join us later during the session, is the founder and CEO of Crownit, a technology driven uh, uh, insights organization. And Mukul Gautam, a VP and uh, Chief of Capacity Building at Purple Audacity, again, a, uh, you know, organization that has a compelling offering in uh, turning around wonderful research. Quickly about the MRSI, established in 1998, MRSI is a unique not-for-profit association of providers and buyers of research insights. With an objective to create awareness of the industry among public at large and as well as the government, establish and promote professional standards, and provide a platform for professionals to engage and showcase their work, collaborate on common issues, and drive a collective agenda. Uh, so, so that with that, I will move on to introducing the speakers and probably calling out a few housekeeping uh, rules. Uh, first, to the introduction, uh, we have today as panelists uh, Naveen Shah and Kirat Grewal. Naveen Shah is the Joint Managing Director of EMC Solutions Worldwide. He's a pioneer in branded entertainment, uh, telling brand stories through entertainment for over two and a half decades. He's worked with companies like Group M as business head, Percept Picture Company as CEO, and now obviously he's leading his own business, that is EMC Solutions Worldwide Private Limited. Welcome again, Naveen. Kirat quickly uh, is a partner at Ormax Media Private Limited. Kirat has over two decades of experience in the India, Indian media and entertainment industry. Prior to Ormax, uh, she was associated with the Times Group, uh, Filmy and Reliance Entertainment, she holds an MBA from Symbiosis Institute of Business Management, Pune. Kirith is, by her own admission, a keen Hindi GEC viewer. Now, I don't know what's OTT done to that. Uh, and, and she enjoys exploring latest trends on social media. So, so welcome, Kirith. Uh, Thank it's you. good to have you both. Uh, you know, I, I would say actually balancing out the art and the science, if we may, you know, and, and quite aptly representing the title we've called out. Welcome, both of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. So, and we will first, I guess, hear from Naveen. Uh, I guess he's the artist, and he's just, he's already claimed to be the storyteller. So, over to you, Naveen. Let's hear about the art. Yeah. Thank you, Sundar, for such a good introduction. And uh, hello, Kirat, and uh, good afternoon to everybody who's attending this uh, talk. So, yes, the art of branded content. Uh, see what is branded content there will be many many definitions i've pulled some from internet actually and uh, don't worry about what the definition is uh, broadly speaking it's a centerpiece of branded content is actually immersive storytelling it's all about storytelling now let me tell you that uh, for the next 10 15 20 minutes which i'm going to talk the the whole mood is going to be something where storytelling is the the key because uh, this Friday, there is a big Bollywood movie releasing called Vikram Veda. And the protagonist makes a lot of points in this movie by telling stories. That is one. And uh, yeah, I'm going to pose you some questions. And to answer those questions, I'm going to tell you some very, very interesting stories. And also, it's afternoon. It's 1 p.m. So probably that will help you to keep awake. Yeah. Next. Next slide. Yeah, next slide. Yeah. So uh, my question to you guys is uh, what comes first? Now, when I say branded content, is it the content or the brand? So this is my first question. Uh, you can probably think of an answer. 
but i'm going to tell you a story please next slide so there is this movie an interesting movie mere dad ki maruti now i have a question for you think about and i think that how this whole thing would have happened did maruti get this great idea and they went to a production house and said that guys i want to make a movie where the center piece of the whole movie is maruti one or was it uh, yashash and our dear friend ashish patil who was ex mtv and who used to be a producer at yashash who had an idea saying that mere dad ki gaddi and it works as mere dad ki gaddi but it will be great if we have a brand so he goes and pitches to maruti now my question is what do you think would have been the case don't worry i'll tell you the answer thankfully the answer was the second one which is the content creator thought that as a independent story which means that irrespective of brand being showcased or not the movie stays as it is and the whole genesis of the whole content and entertainment quotation is intact and thank god that it happened that way and so they went and it pitched and maruti was very happy to be part of it but think if i ask you if maruti had briefed yashraj to make a film uh, my fear is that it could have ended up becoming a 3 hour of ad film and which i don't want i don't i'm not sure whether as a marketer you would want to bore your customer and make a, a very very brand loaded film yeah so that was my first thing that uh, the first take is that in a branded content it's very very important that the content comes first and then brand has to seamlessly just be woven in in the content next slide this is honestly if you ask me a biggest uh, reason why the whole stream of branded content is not flourishing or it's not playing to its potential the reason being i think as practitioners as marketers as as people who are in this business the question is that do we actually have a good judgment of an idea you know or i a judgment of a good idea uh, now i'll i'm going to tell you two interesting stories around it next slide now just concentrate to the left side of it and you know this this is a very 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 iconic picture so imagine in 98 you are sitting in a board room and some gentleman is coming and just presenting that there is an englishman looking guy is trying to take some fish out fishing and nothing is coming up and then there is one localite who comes and in some very weird south indian accent he does something and he just puts one two three four drops of something he puts the rod in and he gets four fishes what will happen you will say what a kiddy idea this is i don't know i don't get it exactly this is what happened uh your the client was pedilite and uh, the md uh, mb parex actually quote and quote said that you know i didn't follow what you said but i know you are going to still make that ad so go and make it why because who was the gentleman who was presenting the man who was presenting was the god of indian advertising man himself piyush pandey and he knows exactly what he was doing and rest is history but on the judgment if i were to tell you that this was a narration chances are that 99 out of 100 times this ad would have never been made in first place first story the second story around this is uh many years ago there was this movie bagban where uh, mr bachchan is shown as working in a bank which is icici and he has imbibed all the good qualities of a good employee of icici so he's helpful he's very loyal he's working for many years in the company and stuff like that so it was a great script and great integration even today when on sony it comes uh, it gathers uh, gets huge amount of trps so say this friday the movie is releasing and just four days prior to that on a sunday before that movie release uh, we happen to show the the agency the work which was already happened the footage of the movie a uh, bagban and icici uh, and we actually showed the whole movie and to our shock the person to whom we showed the servicing person came out and said if this is what we have done 
we are certainly to lose the business forget about this we are going to lose the account only and cut to three months down the line that same person goes on stage and picks an mv which is which was very very prestigious those days now also it's prestigious uh, for media innovation for the same thing which was probably uh, very badly ridiculed by the same person when the person saw it so the point i'm making is that yes it is very very difficult to judge a good idea but what you can probably do is you can do two things around it one is that you have to back a horse uh, who's actually a you know somebody who knows the medium pretty well and who has a track record and yes uh, probably you can get some research thrown in which probably cannot give you you know it cannot give you whether do i have a winner on my hand but at least it can save you from a, a disastrous downside yeah next now if i were to tell you that you know there are three important pillars to branded content and the first is the uniqueness when i say uniqueness the idea itself the second is the relevance now if i see lot of ideas do pass these two tests which is unique idea and they are very relevant to brand but what makes a good idea into a great idea is this third pillar and i will explain you what this third pillar is uh, but i'll tell you what it is so that you understand my these next two stories and that is that you need to have scale to anything which you do to make a good branded content i can have a great idea i can have a very relevant idea to my brand but if i don't have scale it just doesn't become that great so i'm going to give you two examples and two stories to narrate that yeah next slide so first to your right there is a uh, lal singh chadda a movie which just got released uh, a month ago actually uh, and you i will tell you about a brand and i i can tell you that most of the audience would have not even heard that something like this happened it was a dream script for a brand called rupa rupa undergarments and rupa hosiery and uh, banya and here the protagonist and his friends go at length and they talk about how pains are been taken to actually you know make right banyans and you know stuff like that it's a dream script for a brand it's very relevant and it was very uniquely done what really did not work is that unfortunately while amir's movie do really good this movie did not do well and hence there was no buzz i mean nobody knows about what happened uh, or actually something like this happened so if you miss the scale part of your uh, equation uh, then the idea doesn't become great actually in this case the idea actually felt and they died a very unnatural death the second example is uh, you know most of our communication has and in india specifically uh, you know something musical around it so what we call as jingle or a song and the marketers like to you know glorify it and we call it anthem so a lot of brands make anthem and uh, on a last count i know that you know there are at least 400 to 500 brands these days in a year make anthems for their brands you know now how do i make this anthem as the anthem so you know we had created an anthem for hayward's there which was called hosla bulan and we were brainstorming how can i make it really big kailash kai was a singer uh, so there was an india pakistan match in asia cup this is way back in 2012 and we actually came up with this idea that how about just before the first ball in an india pakistan match is bowled we actually do a world premiere of this song you know and uh, it was bizarre because india pakistan cricket match sometimes is more uh, filled with tension and excitement than india pakistan physical war you know and uh, rest is history actually we played it and it was telecasted in 150 countries simulcast and uh, this became so iconic that you know actually uh, the client ended up investing you know at least 10x of what they had planned and they got a huge amount of roi around it so i think scale is equally important as much as the idea and relevance yeah next slide this is uh, a very very favorite question of mine that you know 
where all can you apply this the obvious answer is yes wherever advertising you know is used so for example to create awareness to change actually mindset and habits yes to increase sales but i am going to talk about uh, some of the applications which are slightly unique and different and which should set you thinking that yeah probably branded content can be used for anything so yeah next slide these are actually uh, my favorite stories of this whole presentation so i'll talk about first the right side uh, then you can read something called as arakshan and century plan so think about there are some categories and some brands which are very very low involvement products where consumers hardly know so if you have chairs and tables around you wouldn't even know which plywood you are using but it is driven by trade and trade becomes more important uh, than even the end consumer in that business so uh, imagine these trade which is all your plywood traders are very very rich they drive luxury cars they stay in penthouse they go for foreign vacations so what can you come up with for this kind of people where you know if give, give them some experience which money can't buy so we were just you know brainstorming with the client who was based out of calcutta and we came up with this idea which then scared us that array idea was good how will we execute was that we just said that how many of these important uh, these dealers would be very very important for you so they said around 150 people we said how about we getting this 150 people to not watch a shoot not meet and greet with mr bachchan not attend a premiere but act with mr bachchan so i mean it sounded very exciting how can you get 150 people to act with mr bachchan so cut to yes there was a movie called arakshan and every frame of this director prakash jha is like there is huge amount of crowd so when i say act means they are present in a live scene of a movie and they only know and when they see it, they get a kick because you know this mr bachchan and the whole jing bang is there and it's part of the movie so we were in bhopal and i must confess that you know when we were doing all this uh, me and my partner manish uh, manish mathur you must be knowing him uh, we got a little too carried away and what we did was we told the client that why don't we add one scene where you also doing something and so mr bachchan comes and tells him that you know thanks that you helped us in making a school and uh, the owner had to just say that nahi ye to hamara first tha now imagine poor thing a dear friend of ours uh, mr agarwal ji and bujanga ji they are worth those days this is way back in 8 years ago worth 6000 crores uh, couldn't speak in front of mr bachchan because mr bachchan has a aura what could have taken one cut went on for 20 cuts what could have lasted for 30 minutes lasted for 5 hours and rest is history but yeah the point is that everybody was extremely happy the sales really jumped there is a record of how this act actually helped in increasing the sales and this is a very unique use of branded content this was one use to the left side i will tell you about a very very interesting story again is that you know we've been listening hearing and whatever from eternity that you know britannia khao and world cup jao or right now i just saw yesterday bon bon khao and go to fifa football world cup and whatever uh, to attend world cup to attend a cricket match to attend ipl to be in the stand to be a vip is done to death how about uh, so there was this client pantaloon used to have this annual sales where used to call uh, the shopping festival so they wanted to gratify 11 customers like never before so we came up with this idea that we will have a cricket match of 11 customers of pantaloon playing a cricket match with 11 stars of the movie houseful so here you to and to make things interesting we had azaruddin as a captain of uh, the pantaloon team and of course uh, our man akshay kumar had just done one movie patiala house for which he was he had trained to to bowl so you know what happened was uh, the production producer is a is a ace producer in bollywood is actually a dear friend sajid nadiadwala he told me navin yeah deal is on everything is good but i can warn you akshay will come there he will just do a toss and we can do a photo op and then that's about it then you can go 
So we said, okay, uh, we want that photo and then rest we will play a match or whatever. He came and the toss happened and then we started playing. He wanted to play the match because he wanted to bowl. And Azharuddin started thrashing him. They lost very badly. He played for one and a half hours. And then Akshay Kumar refused to go home. He said that I want to play one more match. I can't go home, you know, losing. So he played one more match. Of course, he lost and he was there for three hours. Now, this is also a piece of branded content which money can't buy and experience to a customer, I mean, to 11 customers playing cricket for three hours with Akshay Kumar and Deepika Padukone and the whole star cast and Azaruddin on this side is an you know, unheard uh, usage of branded content. So I just want to tell you that uh, you can think of many, many more ways of using branded content. Next. This is the being in communication business for a uh, you know, long time. I think there is always this debate. And uh, so we colloquially used to say that ads was short form. And of course, short form sometimes is as long as one minute, two minute, which can be as short as 10 seconds. And usually branded content is long form, which is can be 30 minutes, can be one hour, can be a movie, can be a web series, 10 series part. But the question here is that do we always need to be really creating long content to make our message memorable? Uh, I'm sure you know the answer, but I'll give you some really good examples where your branded content was probably as short as 10 seconds and it has become part of you know our whole memory system. Yeah, next slide. So I'll I'll talk about the, the one which is on your right side, which is uh, Krish and Bone Vita, where there is a simple question. Somebody has said, you know, how do you get so Krish was the actually the original, the only superhero Bollywood has created in so many years. And he was asked a very innocent question that, you know, what is the raza of all your superpowers? And he says, Main Bone Vita Roche Vita. And it actually became like a cult statement. It really worked. The second one was in this movie, Zindagi Na Mile Dubara, where all these three dudes are on holiday in Spain. And they're going to do a daredevil stunt of you know uh, doing uh, skydiving and everybody's scared and that's the time where they actually pick up a mountain dew and just you know take a sip and then they go because the whole proposition is that darke aage jeet so just you know whenever you are in this situation just have a sip and you know you can go so that was very very memorable and the third one is where we were associated where uh, raju irani is a you know, he's very clear about his scripts, what will come in and what won't. So he said that, you know, I have a script, I have a scene where Amir in PK, he goes back to his planet because throughout the movie he shot a lot of stuff and in his planet, there is no electricity. So you need a battery which lasts long and really long. And the only battery which says this is Duracell. So we had this whole Duracell and the scene is very, very brief. It's a penultimate scene of the movie. It's at the last five minutes of the movie and it stays with you forever. So sometimes a short message can be as effective as long. So the net take here is in a branded content, don't worry about the length. The storytelling is way more important than the length of what you are trying to do. Yeah. Next slide. I want to understand and you, you I want you to think for like 10 seconds that, you know, if for human nirvana, we can have many, many paths. So like the Ashtang Yoga says that you do yam niyam to go to dhyan dharana samadhi. What would be a self-actualization for a brand? And this is what I was thinking. And I was saying that the day you become colloquial, you become part and parcel and the fabric of this whole you know, uh, community you know, and uh, society, and you get picked by content. So content is not now chasing, uh, the brand is not chasing content, but the contents is chasing brand or is actually naturally picking it. That is the time I think the brand actually does self-actualization. So if we do consistently a lot of brand uh, content, I think you can reach to this stage. And there are two, three brands which actually have achieved that stage uh, at some point in their life cycle. Yeah, next slide. 
so the first one is of course uh, to your right there is there was a brand called kodak and we had kodak movement which became so colloquial that it actually was picked up in your day to day life amul is something which we loved and everybody and this is what we put in is as old as two days ago which is julan tumhe nahi bhul payenge have a ball which is it's all colloquial but the story which i want to tell you is about this uh, gentleman arwaz khan who's brother of uh, superstar salman khan who made this movie dabang and accidentally there was a cult song which got created which was jhandu bam which you all know which was not planned for actually it ended up with some dispute with the brand and the production house but to the sequel looking at the success arbaz came to us and said that you know we want a brand we are not very stickler on what kind of money but it has to be part and parcel of our culture so and it should be very seamless it cannot be something which you know looks forced so we did brainstorming and we could hardly think of any names we thought of cadbury's we thought of xerox and finally what really made it was fevicol and let me tell you that we actually had a bigger idea to put in fevicwick because that would have really helped the brand in a much bigger way because the brand was much smaller then uh, but it did not pass the test of actually becoming so colloquial that it's effortless that even when we are talking we use this word very cold you know so so i would say that when you consistently keep doing lot of these good pieces of branded content eventually you become part of the culture and then content starts picking you up yeah next slide so to sum up whatever we've still you know we've seen from this uh, good stories was first was content is always first the brands have to you know come they come later and but we have to fit in brands seamlessly in fact uh, uh, the the point here is that it has to be done very very uh, aesthetically and seamlessly which is the tough task the second part is that yes it is very difficult to predict a winner uh, maybe my co presenter today kirit will actually throw some light that it may not be that difficult but actually uh it is difficult and uh, however with research we can actually uh, probably buy an insurance and ensure that our, the downsize is limited so Th the third thing is that there are three pillars to branded content which is uniqueness relevance and scale i mean i i very i'm very clear that if it's not of a certain stature and size it may not make it into a great branded content uh applications are it's like a brahmastra in your hand and you can probably have numerous applications of what you can do with it storytelling is more important than the length it can be short long medium anything doesn't matter but the storytelling is the hero and uh, once the con the brand becomes part of the pop culture it actually achieves that you know ultimate stage of uh, where it should be or that should be the ultimate objective yeah so before we wind up it's not all this rosy yeah so i was coming to that uh, while it sounds very cool the stories were all great but uh, the the path is little difficult and i will quickly sum up that what are these uh, limitations for this one is that most of the brands look at it as one off and very tactical and they don't make it as part of their uh, you know strategy the measurement of course will be spoken about uh, the non aesthetic brand placement now what happens is uh, in india the whole craft of moving in a brand is little not refined it's more in your face and sometimes it doesn't do well gap in valuation now this is very important as practitioners we need to have a different spec when we are actually evaluating a good branded content uh, if normal advertising is fd this is buying stocks so that is you know low return low returns uh, and low investment this is high risk high returns and uh, lastly you are also having the risk of timelines because sometimes this whole content takes more time than what you think and this more time can be season and non season for you you know yeah and lastly uh, the last slide i would say that what would be a way forward for something like this we need to have a clear objective and hence clear create clear briefs for you know practitioners also more importantly when you look at this now you have to have a little different mindset 
you can't have a same mindset when i'm doing advertising versus branded content and yes think little long term rather than a one off so this is all i have to say and uh, thanks for being very patient and listening to me thank you navin you're ever the storyteller thank you very much uh, you know i'm just going to call out uh, to our audience uh, and say that on your screen uh you know you can type in your questions that you want us to raise to the panelists and we'll kind of do that towards the end of the session uh for those of you who have not used go to uh there will be a questions window in the in the panel that you have on the right hand side just click there type your questions we'll be very happy to raise that to the panelists later on in the session uh navin i think you you kind of uh, brought to life uh, you know the whole context of why branded content is relevant and the kind of payoffs i mean they are very significant i mean you've created you've shown us examples that have become part of popular culture right and and no amount of money uh, in advertising is ever going to do that uh, and you also called out uh, several limitations and challenges uh, and you know uh, and you've been quite honest about it which is uh, you know which just shows the uh, you know your expertise in this space and you know how you're helping brands be this uh, this space completely but at the same time uh, you also emphasize that a lot of it is art you know uh, the idea is only so much till it can get executed in a great way and nobody can predict scale you know you have a very successful star who's never had a recent history or decadal history of movies not doing well and then there is a failure right so so there are risks associated of course and and as a as a practitioner or a custodian of a brand's investment if i'm a marketing manager or a brand manager how do i kind of uh, balance the art with uh, you know the science of data uh, so we have kirat uh, you know welcome again kirat so i'm sure you heard the artist so so you i'm sure you love being the artist as well but i would request you to wear the hat of the scientist today and tell us how data is helping uh, brands content producers uh, and 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 kind of this entire space of uh, i would say brands associating with content uh, come through in a more uh, structured way see at the end of the day de risking is about making sure we have a checklist uh, navin called out some in terms of scale uniqueness uh, you know how the idea is etc cetera, etc cetera. but i'm sure there are different parameters uh, brands look at their successes as well so over to you tell us more about it and and i'm sure as uh, partners from the insights community uh, you know those those of them listening in the call are also keen to understand you know how uh, we can make this uh, a better proposition when we pitch to our respective customers and also maybe to navin's point in saying how do we make branded content become a part and parcel of how uh, content is used by brands so kirat over to you and samir and mukul i know you guys are there uh, somewhere in the background so if there's anything you want to call out do that quickly and uh, we hand over to kirat absolutely thank you sundar and thank you navin Uh, Kira, this is Samir. Um, uh, I think not only about branded content, but also about your expertise around celeb celebrity and endorsements. We would love right. to know the science behind that. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. Uh, just a second. I'm just gonna. Um, is is the right window on display for everyone? Yes, celebrity endorsement section. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Naveen. Thank you so much. That was so um, fascinating to just hear about all the creativity that's gone in. You know, we've seen such fabulous branded content, and uh, they're very memorable, of course. And I totally agree with you that you know, um, uh, you know, there is a quality that comes to creativity. And uh, what I'm today planning to talk about is uh, you know so you spoke about branded content um the aspect that i'm planning to you know just discuss with everyone of you here today is uh what we're seeing a lot along with you know a brands having integrations in content brands are also using uh, celebrity endorsers right for themselves so um and you know very often we also hear uh, the whole process of taking a celebrity endorser sometimes can also just be driven by what you know the 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 head horn show or the owner of the brand uh, you know who he or she may have a personal liking for is chosen but i think over the years brands have also realized that uh, you know this is something this is an area that they need to get sharper in because 
getting a right celebrity endorser, uh, you know, is something that's going to impact the kind of visibility you can build, the kind of cut through you can get, you know, um, uh, getting a right celeb brand endorser can just create the differentiation for you that you may not get with just another celebrity on board because even if it's a very popular celebrity uh maybe doing a lot of ads as well but it doesn't have a relevance or a resonance with your brand may just get lost in the clutter so it's very important to get the right celebrity endorser so that you're able to enhance credibility you know uh for your product because you're associating with a similar brand in terms of the celebrity and of course ultimately all of it comes down to you know driving sales uh, so, Kira, sorry, uh, sorry to interrupt your flow. You might want to put the slides on uh, screen show. Um, it is. Um, Never mind. Uh, you can continue. I mean, let's not waste time on figuring that one out. Just go on. Uh, or maybe I can just ask Diana to show it because uh, it's not showing. Uh, it's Diana, showing... do you want to? I can show you. Yes. Yeah, do that. Yeah. So then you'll have to call out for your slides, Kira. Yeah. No problem. <laughs> right. Yeah, the next one. Next, yeah. So this is just, you know, I, I just thought I'd put an example over here. So, uh, you know, some of us may be familiar with Hanes. Uh, you know, they are, uh, you know, an underwear and hosiery brand. And uh, way back in 1989, you know, at the brand, uh, did a fabulous assessment in terms of picking up, you know, a very young Michael Jordan at that time uh, as an endorser for the brand, because at that time, the brand was targeting both high-end and mass retail outlets. And, uh, you know, their assessment of Jordan at that time was that Jordan was popular amongst the masses because, of, of course, you know, his roots. Um, and at the same time, was also popular among the classes due to his performance. So they got a perfect amalgamation of what the brand uh, you know, was targeting and who they were targeting. And uh, they've had a successful 30 year stint. Uh, in 2019, they celebrated 30 years together. And it's just, you know, getting the right celebrity endorser can make all the difference uh, to a brand and also gives you an equity that is so long term rather than just having a tactical endorser on board can give you a little spurt in awareness, but may not be able to build the equity for your brand over a period of time. Yeah, next. Next, yeah. So this is where, uh, you know, uh, I think Ormax Sellable comes in. So Sellable is in fact one of our uh, tools that we have where we help brands uh, to choose the most appropriate, you know, celebrity endorser for them. And how it, this, this happens is that Sellable is actually, uh, you know, allows for data-driven evaluation of more than 500 celebrities across domains. So you have film stars across languages, you have, uh, you know, characters of television, of, you know, of animation, you have sports stars, uh, you know, you have singers, you have influencers. Uh, so you, uh, you know, you name it and Celebel has those stars. And it allows, you know, um, a, a brand can look at this entire plethora of celebrities who are there and then make a very smart choice on who they feel would be the right fit for the brand. So just moving to the next slide. Now, how does the selection approach happen in Celebrity? So what is the science over here? So what we do is we use, right, we use something called the Ormax personality framework. Now, what you're seeing on the screen is the framework. This is adapted from Jennifer Arker's brand framework, and this is adapted to the Indian market. I'll just explain this framework to you, and that's when you, you're gonna see a lot of it for various celebrities in the next few slides. So what this framework does is it says any brand or any celebrity or a character, you know, has a personality and that personality can be understood across five dimensions. So the columns that you're seeing over here of sincerity, excitement, competence, sophistication and ruggedness. These are five dimensions through which a personality of a brand or a character or a person can shine through. And each of these dimensions is built through a series of traits. So there are 27 traits in this table over here. Uh, you know, you'll see traits like for sincerity is built through a brand having traits like, you know, being honest, real or friendly or caring. Similarly, competence is built through you being seen as hardworking or successful or intelligent and so on and so forth. So you just move to the next slide. 
So what we do is each of the celebrities who's there in the ORMAC Cerebral database, uh, for each of those celebrities, their co-target audience was asked to select up to three traits. Now, the 27 traits, uh, you know, but you restricted choosing the three traits that match the celebrity, uh, you know, the best. And then what you're going to see later in terms of the personality framework, you will see a framework which will have different color codings. So I'll just explain the color coding to you. Uh, from dark to dark green to white. So the darker the green, the stronger is the match of that trait, uh, that personality trait, uh, you know, in that celebrity. So dark green is a very strong match. Then you go to green, which is a strong match. Light green is a moderate match. And if it's not colored, means that particular trait has a very low match with that celebrity. So I'll just show you some examples over here. Uh, we'll start with, uh, you know, the man who just we heard played three and a half hours of cricket because he wanted to come across as someone who won the match. So this is Akshay Kumar, currently number one, uh, you know, um, star in uh, across Hindi films. Uh, if you see his personality framework, what you, the first thing you're going to see over here is that he is defined by two dimensions, that is of excitement and competence. These are his dominant dimensions, right? And when you look at, uh, you know, but he has traits across four dimensions. So he also has traits in sophistication and ruggedness, but his most dominant trait is successful. And then there is also a strong association with hardworking and spirited. And then you have a host of, uh, you know, an interesting mix of traits to his personality from being cool and funny to also being confident to also being glamorous and also being tough and rugged. So it makes for a very interesting uh, you know, personality as uh, a celebrity himself. Now, this is Akshay Kumar. We move to the next slide. We'll see, uh, you know, this is a very different personality. Now, equally successful in his sphere, but this is Dhoni. But if you see, he has a very unidimensional personality. So he is, uh, you know, totally, uh, uh, you know, kind of uh, on the competence dimension. You're seeing him have an association with all the traits and competence. Uh, there's also one trait of cool, but there's nothing else that Dhoni stands for. So very, very, so if, if there's a brand uh, which has a single point agenda to, you know, uh, put forward and how competent they are, couldn't get a better celeb match than Dhoni. Uh, now, this is Neha Kakkar. She's a musician. And if you see, again, a very different profile, while, uh, you know, popular, but more, you know, leaning towards a sophistication dimension. Interestingly, she also has a secondary dimension if you see competence. Uh, so she has traits like successful, glamorous and cute. She also has an emotional trait going for her as well as, you know, contemporary and good looking. Yeah, next. Uh, now, this is a this is a TV uh, show character. So this is Anupama. She is currently the most popular character on Hindi GCs, and she comes on a show called Anupman Star Plus. It's the number one show on television right now, Hindi. Uh, very different character profile, but again, you know, a profile which, if you see, is driven by the sincerity and competence dimension. So it's an interesting match. Uh, you know, you'll currently find her, uh, you know, promoting household brands like, you know, she's promoting uh, Ram Dev Heen, uh, so, uh, but very family oriented, but at the same time still being as a very sensible character. Yeah. Uh, now this is, uh, you know, he's a social media star. So this is Bhuvan Bam. Uh, similar to Akshay Kumar, uh, again, excitement and competence are his defining dimensions, but his defining trait, you know, while for Akshay it was successful here, it is actually funny. So funny is his defining, uh, you know, most strongly associated uh, trait, but he's also seen as hardworking and successful along with a host of other traits and excitement. Yeah, so Celebel allows brands to, uh, you know, uh, scan through a database of characters across domains like film stars in Hindi and other languages, TV stars, digital social media, music, uh, animation characters for kids. And you'll see some of this coming up in some of the examples I've, you know, just curated for all of you over here. Uh, so maybe we can just move to the next slide. Yeah. So while we have all of this, the database is there and the selection process, uh, you know, the approach is using the Ormax personality framework. I'll just give you, you know, an outline on what the selection process is so that then you can understand the illustration later. So, uh, 
the whole idea is to create, uh, you know, to find the right celebrity match for a brand. So the way that happens is that first a desired profile for the brand is created using the Ormax personality framework. Now we work with the brands together so that we are able to understand which are, you know, the traits that they feel are most associated with their brands and according to them, which trait has, you know, uh, uh, say a very strong match or a moderate match, etc. cetera. Uh, this is then, this data for the brand, you know, this personality framework that you just saw for Akshay and uh, Dhoni, the same framework is created for the brand. And this framework is then matched with the profiles of the celebrities and characters in the Ormax level database. Once this mapping is done, that's when a single number score called the Ormax Sellable score comes out. Now, that is nothing but the percentage match between the brand profile, you know, and the celebrities profile. So over here, a profiling of the personalities are done. So the brand would ideally want to associate with a celebrity or a character who matches their brand profile the best. Uh, of course, popularity is another aspect. While that is not covered in Cellable, we of course have that data. We have data for the most popular stars across India, the most popular stars in various languages, most popular TV stars, kids stars, so on and so forth. But that data is also available and can be used. Yeah. Next. Okay, now let's see how Cellable works. So. Um, uh, I'm just putting, uh, you know, a disclaimer over here that this is not a brand data. This is data that's been created by us. So we're not sharing any anything confidential over here. Uh, so let's so we, we created a, you know, a brand profile for Nike. So we're all familiar with the brand. They are a beauty brand and an aggregator platform. So just move to the next slide. So Nike as brand, uh, if you look at Nike's desired brand profile, so as a brand, you know, they have three dimensions on which they're strong, which is excitement, competence, and sophistication, and being driven by the traits of contemporary and glamorous at the top, and also young, successful, and confident, along with a host of other traits like upper class, hardworking, innovative, et cetera. Now, what we did was we created this desired brand profile for Nike, and then we ran this through our database. So what we'll see in the next slide is which are the top 10 celebrities which had the strongest association and match with this brand profile that we created for Nike. So over to the next slide. So these are your top 10 celebrities. You see right at the top is Priyanka Chopra Jonas who has an Ormax sellable match of 92% with Nike. And then you have, what's interesting is you're gonna see a lot of uh, female film stars, you know, who are there in the top 10. May not be the case for every brand, like we've seen some of the other case studies that I have later, but you'll have, you know, it, so while Priyanka is right at top at 92, but then there's also a Sonam who's there at say a 78. Uh, there's also Katrina who's there at 80. So this is, you know, you've got, you've got a range of stars, different stars having a different popularity and having a different, uh, you know, personality uh, in terms of the kind of roles that they do in the films that they do. But when you're looking at what the celebrity stands for, these are the ones that had the closest match to what we saw for Nike. But interestingly, if you just look at other celebrities as well, so brand doesn't need to just look at the top 10. If you just go to the next slide, what you'll see over here, what you'll see over here is we also have two male, uh, you know, celebrities who had a strong match with Nike's desired profile. So you have Hrithik Roshan and you have KL Rahul who have a very strong match with uh, you know, for the brand Nike. Now, this is not something that may be very intuitive, uh, you know, for a brand when they're considering a celebrity. Also, when you're wanting to go to, uh, you know, say, uh, you know, are you looking at a Hindi market? Are you looking at the Tamil market, Telugu market, Marathi market? So you can look at celebrities from across languages as well. So there is a Samantha, Nayantara, Saita Mangar over here. Uh, there's also Samia Mirza. She's a non-cricket celebrity and she's the one who seems to have you know, a very strong match with Nike and this project are wholly from the digital and social media world. If you just, I'll just, I'll just, you know, take you through another brand. Now, this is Lifebuoy. Uh, Lifebuoy, we're all familiar with the brand. If you just go to the next slide, Diana. So Lifebuoy's desired brand profile, very different from Nike. Uh, it is a brand which, uh, you know, uh, is strong on the two dimensions of sincerity and competence. So brand which is defined as being family oriented and caring, but at the same time also strongly associated with being 
an honest and a wholesome brand, a confident brand and a successful brand. Now, when we you know, ran this brand profile with our database, let's just look at who came out as a top 10 matches. So a very diverse set of celebrities uh, you know, for that desired profile of life. So you have cricketers like Sunil Gavaskar, Rahul Dravid, uh, Virendra Sehwag, Sachin Tendulkar, Mitali Raj. Uh, you also have you know, TV and film actors like Ram Kapoor, Amitabh Bachchan. You have TV characters like Anupama from Star Plus and Pragya from ZTV. Uh, and there's also an animation character, Ninja Hathori. This is, uh, you know, one of the long running uh, animation shows on Nickelodeon, uh, which had a strong, you know, brand personality fit with Life Boy. So it just suddenly opens up, you know, uh, the game for the brand in terms of who they can look at as being good matches with the brand. Uh, if you go to the next slide, what we'll see over here is, uh, you know, if you look at other domains, then you have, you know, uh, the Telugu superstar, Chiranjeevi, who's there. Uh, you have, uh, you know, Jyotika, who's a Tamil film star. You have Geeta Fogart, who's a non-cricket, uh, you know, sports star. Again, having a very strong association and match with the brand. And I'll take you through the last case study, which is on Fast Track. So now Fast Track is a brand when we created the desired brand profile for them. Uh, if you see the next slide. Yeah, so this is a brand which, uh, uh, you know, is uh, driven by the excitement and the ruggedness dimension. So very different brand from the previous two, uh, seen as cool, young, spirited, contemporary, daring, at the same time, also tough and rugged, confident and successful. Now, when you look at, you know, this desired brand profile and see which celebrities match this, this is what you get over here in terms of the top 10 celebrities. So you have uh, you know, you have sports persons like Rishabh Pant and Hardik Pandya featuring over here, uh, Shikhar Dhawan as well. You also have, uh, you know, action stars like Vidya Jamwal, uh, Tiger Shroff, you know, who are featuring over here. You have, uh, you know, a Sonu Sood who comes in over here, a Randijay Singha and a Shibham Gill as well. If you just look at, uh, you know, the other, um, you know, actors and celebrities who match Fast Track's profile, you have, uh, you know, uh, the number of Pan India number one star Prabhas who's there, who's got a very strong association, a personality match with Fast Track. Uh, you've got Dhanush featuring over here. Uh, you know, there's also an animation character, Ben 10, uh, you know, who connects with that. And of course, uh, we have Vacha. Uh, from the music industry who has a strong association with brand. So these were just, uh, you know, uh, I just, sorry, if you can just go back, please. Yeah, these were just, uh, you know, examples that I put over here to bring out that when you are, as a brand, when I'm evaluating a celebrity as an endorser, uh, popularity is not the only aspect I may want to look at because ultimately I will want the endorser to take my brand forward. But if the personality fits, uh, you know, are not strong, then there's about as much as I can, you know, uh, you know, the brand can leverage on the star. And that's where the, you know, or max sellable comes in and helps them make smarter decisions. So, yeah, so just leaving you, uh, you know, with this last quote, uh, which is, uh, sorry, the next slide. So, you know, one thing that people don't realize about celebrity endorsements is how effective an endorsement can be from someone who's relatively unknown, but has the right personality. And this is, uh, you know, from the chairman of Under Armour, fairly well-known brand, we all have experienced it. But this is just to kind of, you know, bring forth that when we use a little bit of science, uh, we are able to make much better choices. So that's what I had to share with all of you. I hope I've finished in time, Sundar. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you have a uh, wonderful Kiris. And I think, uh, you know, Navin's clarion call was saying, you know, how do we de-risk? How do we help brand de-risk? And you have, you know, very, uh, you know, clearly illustrated that uh, data and a framework can de-risk how brands choose celebrities for their endorsements. Uh, and I guess uh, for this audience who are from the research community, Navin's actually left a larger challenge. Uh, in saying that, uh, you know, how do we make, uh, you know, content or branded content a part and parcel of the strategy that the brand uses and not use it as something that comes up because, hey, here's a great idea or somebody, you know, at that point in time thought it was a wonderful thing to do, but to kind of consistently do it and become a part of pop culture 
And at the same time, de-risking that with information and data, I think is a massive opportunity for us out there. We've just got a few minutes before we have to kind of uh, close shop on this webinar. Samir, if you're there, do you want to come on and uh, you know uh, get some of the questions from our audience or whatever you had in your list? Uh, and yeah. cool, probably one from you and one from you, uh, uh, Samir, might just round the session off. Over to you guys. Yeah. Uh, this is Samir, I do, we do have a question. A few questions. I'll take the first one. Um, this is for Naveen. Um, uh, you spoke about need for a clear brief for a brand. Could you speak up, speak about a couple of brands, example of brands which have articulated their desired DNA well, without obviously breaching confidentiality, but who have actually been able to articulate their desired dna well oh uh, yeah in fact uh, see so that's where i said that this is the difficult one where actually you don't get clear briefs but the closest uh, briefs for branded content is not the ones which so i'll tell you what, where some of the problem is people send media briefs to branded content actually when you send a communication brief the one which where your communication is getting created so uh, for example, if I were to talk about, say, a brand uh, like Gillette, uh, the briefs there for branded content would be very close to the kind of activation and the stuff which they are doing. And one of the activation which got a global award was where the women made this huge statement that they like clean shaven men. It's a very putting the whole you know uh, thing on its head. And now that content was created not based on a media brief, but that was based on the communication brief. So, so that is what, so there I think they articulated very well, saying that, you know, uh, men will stop growing beard if you really make a lot of noise about that women like clean shaven men, yeah. So that's an example of a good brief, yeah. Thank you, thank you, Naveen. Next question for Kirat. Uh, fitment is based on existing match of parameters slash characteristics or something that the brand wants to build and celebrity can lend that characteristic. Sorry. I don't know, I don't know if there's a question there, but uh, yeah. uh, maybe there's a comment from Vishal. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah, go ahead. If you have, have something, go ahead, Kiran. Yeah, no, yeah, so, yeah, I think that's, that's uh, I think that is a statement in itself, but yes, the answer is yes. So the idea is to be able to get the fitment right. Uh, so you're evaluating the brand on the same set of personality attributes and you're seeing how do you map with existing celebrities. But of course, a brand may also want to, you know, uh, you, may, you may get a good match with a celebrity who may not have the potential to give you the reach because they may not be as popular. So then you may want to filter, you know, the celeb match with the popularity as well. Uh, that data is of course there with us as well but uh, that's something that may be an additional layer that a brand would want to consider got it thank you we have two minutes before we uh, close this last question how do you create the brand profile for these brands and you either one of you can take it and you know and the next within that is it just from the client preferences or do you run an algorithm <laughs> Uh, I think Kirit can take that, but I have one very interesting point that be a little cautious when you use the data. The third celebrity in the Nika list, which I saw, was a little scary, which was Sunny Leone. So while the data would suggest something, I have a you know a, a reality check and an environment check before you whatever you do. Yeah, Kirit, sorry. I got yeah. that. I got that. Kirit. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, for Celebel, the way it is done is that the brand has access to the personality framework. Uh, at their end, uh, they need to decide which are the traits that they feel they stand for. So they have their own uh, brand architectures uh, that is in a way, you know, converted into the personality framework. Uh, it's co discussed with us and uh, because, you know, brand then may want to stand for uh, you know 15 traits but that's not the way it happens so there is a process of iteration that happens and discussion in deciding what are the key traits or the dimensions that you are standing for and uh, that's how it's decided upon so there is a framework that's given to them from our end we help them work on that got it thank you sundar 
Thanks, Samir. Uh, and, and the next slide, please, Diana. We'll just make a quick announcement of our next session and thank our panelists and hosts. So the next webinar uh, coming up uh, uh, later in October, uh, the question we are trying to answer with help from our research partners, Ipsos, Cantor, and Nielsen IQ, is our consumers value trading due to inflation? I'm sure uh, a lot of brands are interested in this question. There's a lot of data that these agencies can bring to the table to answer that question. So look forward to uh, all of you joining us in that session and also inviting your friends and colleagues. Uh, Naveen and Kirat, uh, wonderful uh, having you on board for this Wednesday webinar. You made, uh, you know, uh, uh, Naveen, you're the storyteller. So you said, I'm going to show you a movie. You did. And Kirat, uh, you know, you kept to the promise of saying, you know, science can actually come and help you minimize your risk and make the right choices. I'm sure there is a lot more to be done in this space. Uh, and I'm sure the audience listening in will come out with new ideas and make this a very vibrant space that it can be. We are the largest content producers in the world just in terms of sheer volume. And, and we potentially do not leverage this content as well as brands should be doing. So I hope this session, in a very small way, helps nudge that in the right direction. Samir, uh, thank you, and thanks to the MRSA Directorate, Diana, and, and Mukul, my co-host. Uh, good day and good evening, guys, and have a good day. Look, you, look forward to having you in the next session. Naveen and Kirat, thank you again. Thank, thank you, Naveen. You, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Amazing. Bye-bye. Good day.